Okay, so I'm ready to pull the lettuces out and plant them out into the greenhouse. Okay, dokie, so I'm out in the greenhouse with my, my little flat of lettuce and still a little surprised that nothing, well, why should I be surprised? It's been pretty cool, but nothing is coming up yet. And the beds that I planted here, mostly spinach and some other things. The snow that I put on this other bed to kind of water it in is melting in real good. So I wanted to get these little lettuces out probably a few days ago, but I'm just now getting to it. They're actually bigger than I wanted. Um, they've got two true leaves, but um, I actually wanted these to be a little bit smaller. And look at this. I wanted, this says green leaf and red leaf, but I got them switched over. Um, so I cannot make this mistake when I'm planting out into the garden. Um, but this is just a greenhouse experiment, so I'm all right. Uh, cause the green leaf tends to grow faster. Um, and I use it like in salad mix, I use more of it. So, um, yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and plant it just amongst the, this is all spinach in here and I'm just going to plant it by these little drip holes. So these blocks are actually really dry. I should have watered them, um, but I don't like to water the day of planting. Otherwise the blocks are tend to kind of fall apart, apart a little bit. Um, let's see, so I got just enough to fill the bed. I'm gonna try and water around these little guys. I don't know. They really need water because the Clubs are too dry, but I don't want to get the leaves wet. Uh, next time I do this, I'm gonna need to make a note. Um, I need to water them. I need to water the blocks the day before I plant them out so I don't have to water them in. They can go ahead and survive in their little blocks. I'm not gonna do these in soil blocks like I did last year. I'm just gonna do them in flats of transplant soil mix and see how that works. I'll split, split it into six. So that should be a decent sized bunch. And um, so then I would have to, I'd want to do two trays of cilantro to make it 12 and one tray of dill. If we're just gonna kind of do a pretty heavy seeding, <laughs> I probably don't even want to seed it that heavy, but whatever. Yeah, it's not even three quarters of a cup. Um, let's throw this dill back in there. So a half cup of cilantro in each of the two trays. Okay, that's all clean. Let's try this with the dill seed. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Well, okay. <laughs> that isn't quite, so it might be actually a quarter cup. Let's see. Yeah, it's not even quite a quarter cup, but let's go ahead and go with a quarter cup. So I need to put a quarter cup of dill into a third tray. Okay, so I got this idea of using culinary coriander seed uh, to grow cilantro from Monty of My Family Garden. And um, he put, he went ahead and chitted the seed in a cloth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Pour the seed in this guy here. And this is just like a cut up t-shirt in a salsa, old salsa, salsa jar. And then I'll go ahead and soak that. And then I made 84 soil blocks and seeded some Italian parsley and curly parsley. In the past, I've grown leeks, just like parsley and all my other starts in individual blocks. But this time I decided to go ahead and use tubs like I've grown my green onions before. And then that also allowed me to kind of fill it up with soil to see if I can't get some longer white shanks for the leeks. Checking my uh, snow here. And it's all melted except for a little tiny patch right there. And lettuce, still alive. <laughs> Look at some of these folks got buried pretty good. But uh, yeah. No seeds up. I have to check to see 
when the seeds came up last year. So I've been looking at my plant log, which is just an Excel table that I put together last year, which includes everything from crop variety to germination date to harvest date. But I've been wanting some additional information in here. So for example, all I have right now is a plant out date. But I'd like to add a ready to plant out date because I know that last year there were some seedlings that were in the soil blocks for one or even two weeks longer than they needed to be when they could have been planted out into the garden. So I need some more accurate information when I'm putting together my planting calendar for the following year and I'm looking at this information. I already had the crop and variety, but this is new. This is the seed company, you know, Territorial or Johnny's, which is what I mostly use. And also this is new planned seed date. So for example, if I look back and think I should have seeded this earlier or I'd planned to seed it at a certain date, but I didn't get to it. And so this is the planned seed date and when I actually seeded. And then this is the seed year. So sometimes I use old seed and it's kind of nice to know in case I get poor germination, which might be one of the reasons. This is another column that I had before, but I just specified hand seeding using the Jang seeder or whether it was something I seeded for transplanting out later. And then these are in the green are for transplants. So the plugs or the soil blocks, the number of plugs that I actually seeded, and then actually how many germinated and can be planted out into the garden. So that's why I have these two sections in that cell. And then I added this, the number of seeds per cell, because sometimes with, like with lettuce, I use just one seed per cell because the germination rate's great. Or it's a, another crop that has doesn't have a really great germination, so I use more seeds per cell. So, or or it's old seed, you know, and I so I use more seeds per cell. So that's what that's for. This is something I had before. This is for direct seeding, but we have here the spacing. So did I space it in row like every inch or inch and a quarter, for example, or if I'm using the Jang seeder, what was the weight of the seed before and after I used the seeder? So I know how much seed went out into the garden. And then I had these all before. This is just the bed identification. I have an identification for each of my beds so that I can know what I planted before in order to do a good rotation in following years. Bed size is the bed length, the number of rows in that bed, and then this is the timing of everything. When the seeds germinated, this is what I added is planned plant out date versus the plant the plant out date. So this is when it was ready to plant out, and this is the date that I actually planted it out into the garden. This is for transplants. And then this is mature date versus harvest date. So again, the plant might be mature enough to harvest, but I might not get to it for another week or so. So this is the actual date that I harvested it. And then these two columns are for days to maturity. So from when it was the date that it was seeded all the way to the date that it was mature to harvest. And um, this is the calculated days to maturity for my garden and versus the catalog days to maturity when they say that it should be mature to harvest. And then I've got notes here. I got a couple of 10 foot copper pipes that I'm gonna cut up and use as legs for the tables in the greenhouse where I keep my, you know, little kale and lettuce and other starts that I'll later plant out into the garden. And those will keep the slugs from going up on the tables and eating my little my little plants. Hi. So thanks to Tyler, I have access to all sorts of crazy little tools and this is going to cut my pipe for me. Uh, and he says, don't make it so tight that you can't like, you want to take a bunch of passes. This is groovy. Oh, there it goes. Cool. So we got our little pipe friend. 
You see that? Yay. And he's one foot long because that's what I had last year. Hello, dear friend. Hi, little buddy. Oh, I think you're losing hair. Oh my gosh, you look mangy. Hi, silly. My goodness. What you doing? There's my garlic bed over there underneath the tarp. See you later. So I looked back at my uh, information from last year and um, it took about a couple weeks for my spinach to come up. So I'm wondering if having that row cover over the top of the soil, keeping, you know, some, retaining some of the heat in the soil might have really helped with germination last year. Okay, so I added some Agrabon row cover and I've actually got it doubled up. So it's two layers. Uh, last year I had two of them doubled up, laid on top of each other, but it was getting down into the twenties at night and it hasn't really been below freezing at night. We were getting some warmer days or some sunny days last year, whereas it's been pretty much kind of overcast and raining the last week or so. And well, before that it was snowing. So, um, Tyler brought home this uh, fancy Forstner bit set so that I can drill holes into my four by fours with this uh, one and eight inch bit here. Hey buddy, I have to be out here too. A squirrel's pissed because I monkeyed up his program, but I'm out here to drill my little four by four and cut it into bits so I can make legs for my tables. Okay, so I've never used a bit like this before and it's probably gonna be a disaster. Let's put his little pointy friend. It doesn't matter if this is exact, I don't think, like if it's exactly in the center. Oh my gosh, here we go, folks. Oh wow, this is awesome. Now I need to try and get it so it goes straight up and down. Oh wow, this is amazing. So that it's not crooked. Okay, hole. Can you see the hole? Oh, yay. <laughs> now I just need to cut these pieces so I have four blocks. Okay, so I've got my cubes in each of the corners at the bottom of the table and the hole where the copper pipe will go in for the leg. So I'm gonna try and hammer this thing down in here. <laughs> this is about nine and a half inches. Good enough. Not exactly straight, but straight up and down, but whatever, that works. Hi! Ugly dugly, so table back here. Last year I had wooden legs and they were stashed in a cup of water to keep the slugs out and that worked but now i have copper and they are not going to want to climb up that much copper i wouldn't think Alrighty, so i just need to set up three more of these tables which will be two per greenhouse so that when any of the starts germinate up in the house i can get them out here real quick into the real light and temperature so yeah, hopefully the seeds germinate here in this bed by next week. You can hear that it's raining out and I'm hoping that it just rains all of this snow off for good. And it'll actually really be spring finally. Until then, I will see you guys later.